कृष्णा कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे हरे Hare 
So, welcome Nitai Prabhu. So, we are very grateful that we have Nitai Prabhu with us. Uh, those nine wonderful topics probably started. So, we will go ahead with them. Or, uh, these are all practical tips. You know, we get many philosophy. But what we are getting from Prabhuji is a, is a practical tips, you know, what, uh, what comes in devotee's life and how to face them in proper manner. It's very, very important uh, lesson. Or uh, we are very grateful to Prabhuji, Sare Ke Sare, Vasa, Shere Kar Rehe Hain, Even Krishna, Sabhi Sastai Sal, Jain Ka Krishna Consciousness Ki Journey Hai, Uska Jain Nichod Hai. So, thank you so much, Nidai Prabhu. We are very grateful to you. Krishna, Krishna. Krishna. So, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yes, Roji. Okay. So, again, it is my great uh, fortune and uh, privilege to be with all of you this evening. And thank you, Giriraj Prabhu, for cultivating such a nice uh, group of devotees. Uh, and it is so wonderful to see each one of their enthusiasm to here yeah, every day, despite even though the lockdown is, you know, is uh, now not fully a lockdown and many have gone back to work. And, but it's really inspiring to see everyone, uh, everyone's uh, enthusiasm to hear Krishna consciousness on a daily basis. So thank you very much uh, for inspiring us uh, by your example and the example of all the wonderful devotees in the group. 
Thank you. So I'll just say the Pranam Mantra and then we'll start. Namam Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale, Sri Mate Satrupas Goswami Tinami. Namam Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale, Sri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinami. Namaste Saraswati Deve, Gauravani Pracharine, Nirvishesh Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine, Vancha Kalpataru Vyasya, Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha, Patitanam Pavinipyo, Vaishnave Pyo Namunama, Jayashi Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar, Srivas Adi, Gauravakta Vinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So it's my, uh, as I said, it's my great fortune to be uh, with you this evening. I just forgot one book. If you could just hold for one minute, uh, I need to bring that. Okay, thank you. This one, this one. Today is the uh, today is the third uh, part of uh, this talk that we started uh, two weeks ago, and we have been discussing uh, various principles that uh, you know I have personally learned from the shastras. Uh, they are not my principles, but those uh, that I identified in the shastra. And by, uh, by putting them in practice, right? whenever I tried to put them in practice, I felt that it gave a lot of strength and it helped in progressing in Krishna consciousness. And when there were times when I was not applying these principles properly, I felt that my Krishna consciousness you know, would recede. So of course, all of you by your own study of Shastra, uh, you will also identify many principles that uh, you will find helpful in your own uh, sadhana and practice. And as I said that these are not, you know, the complete uh, principles, the comprehensive list. Each one of you will have your own things that you identify. So uh, please don't take it, take this as you know, the absolute nine principles. So we have discussed five so far. And in the last uh, uh, session, we discussed two. And that was uh, the importance of honesty and also the importance of uh, developing deep relationships with devotees. So why is honesty important? Can anyone answer from last time's discussion? Does anyone remember anything about what we discussed? Uh, uh, that why honesty was important? Yes, sort of Prabhu. Hare Krishna, please. Yes. Is it because Krishna is friend of an honest? Yes. So Krishna is the benefactor of the truthful devotee. Right? So honesty pleases Krishna. And uh, we read a beautiful um, uh, we read a beautiful passage by Srila Prabhupada where he says uh, that we do not even have to be like Lord Chaitanya, like Lord Shiva, 
like Brahma Ji, right? But the only qualification is that whether one is a Brahmin, Kshatriya, Vaishya, or Shudra, he must be open, frank, and free from reservations. And then by performing his particular occupation duty under the guidance of a proper spiritual master, he can achieve the highest success in life. And uh, Shaurya Prabhu has uh, also raised his hand. Uh, could you... Uh, Hare Krishna Prabhuji, this is Neha. Yes. Uh, Sorry, uh, Masit. Uh, yes. uh, Prabhuji, you also mentioned about uh, honest. If you're honest, it makes you humble. Because uh, being honest makes you feel uh, your repentance. Like Very nice. We do anything wrong, so we inside we know that we have done something wrong, and it helps us to uh, in, improve our standards in the in the path of Krishna consciousness. Yeah, this is a very uh, important point that you uh, recall. That unless we are honest, then we will not uh, recognize our lackings, and unless we recognize our lackings, you know, we will not be genuinely humble. And therefore, we will not be able to proceed uh, in our Krishna consciousness. And uh, Prabhupada has written many, many uh, purports on these words, uh, repentance and regret. And Bhaktivinoda Thakur himself, uh, I shared a very important quote last time that uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he says that without this tapa or inner repentance, a soul cannot live as a Vaishnava. Right? So if you are aspiring to live or, you know, or to become a Vaishnava, then this is such an es essential principle. And then we discuss the, the importance of uh, association or uh, having deep relationships with devotees. And how that helps us. And I shared with you my own personal example that, uh, you know, that going through so many tough times, I reflected that what was that one thing that really sustained me. And one of the most important things was having the support, uh, the, the love, and the guidance of uh, devotees. Right? And also, uh, you know, friends and well-wishers and parents. Uh, so it's so important to have that support because without that, it's very difficult to advance in Krishna consciousness. And as uh, uh, Prabhupada has written in the Nectar of Instruction that uh, the uh, International Society for Krishna Consciousness was formed to facilitate the six loving exchanges between devotees. So this is the essence of uh, our uh, practice, that the more we practice Krishna consciousness, that we should appreciate and value the uh, association of devotees. And in fact, uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he has said in a very important verse that association of devotees is the underlying principle for the birth of bhakti and not only is it the underlying principle for the birth of bhakti but it is also this principle also sustains when when achieves when one achieves krishna prema so this is the mool principle or the fundamental or the root principle of advancement in krishna consciousness so today, I will uh, start on the sixth principle, which I learned from the scriptures uh, is so important, is that we must be responsible in our uh, duties. Right? Uh, and, uh, you know, there are two levels of duties uh, or dharma that our shastras talk about. Right? So Prabhupada, in, in a small purport, in the second chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, right, uh, verse 31, in the purport, Prabhupada says, 
there are two kinds of swadharmas, specific duties. As long as one is not liberated, one has to perform the duties of his particular body in accordance with religious principles in order to achieve liberation. When one is liberated, one swadharma's specific duty becomes spiritual and is not in the materially, material bodily concept. So Prabhupada goes on, he says, in the bodily conception of life, there are also specific duties for the Brahmins and the Kshatriyas respectively. And such duties are unavoidable. Swadharma is ordained by the Lord. And this will be clarified in the fourth chapter. On the bodily plane, Swadharma is called Varnashram Dharma or man's stepping stone for spiritual understanding. Human civilization begins from the stage of Varnashram Dharma or specific duties in terms of specific modes of nature of the body obtained. Discharging one's specific duty in any field of action in accordance with the orders of higher authorities serves to elevate one to a higher status of life. So Prabhupada is saying that, and this is what our Shastras say, that we have two types of duties. One is the duty pertaining to this body, right? our psychophysical nature uh, that we have acquired to our, according to our karma, and uh, so now when we take on the process of Krishna consciousness, so the tendency usually is that we become a little, uh, you can say, uh, not so motivated to carry out our duties in this world. Like for example, our family duties, right? our financial responsibilities towards the family, uh, our responsibilities towards our children, our responsibility towards the society, uh, this, our responsibility towards assisting the mission, right? So we should not be neglectful of these duties. Of course, we are not ambitious. It is natural for a devotee not to be ambitious for material success and uh, progress, right? That is natural. But that does not mean that we do not do our duties in a responsible way. In fact, the whole essence, one of the key messages of the Bhagavad Gita, and Krishna keeps harping on this point, is that Arjuna, you have to do your duty as a Kshatriya. So similarly, as you know, Grihasthas, most of us are Grihasthas, uh, we have duties uh, to our family. Uh, you know, we have financial responsibilities. We have to spend time with our children. We have to spend time with our spouses. So uh, we have to, you know, uh, take care of our parents. There's so, there's so many duties that we have to take care of, and we should not shy away from these duties, thinking that okay, you know, this is not like really spiritual, and this is like lesser. Right? This is not the same as, you know, spending time and chanting and hearing or doing deity worship. Right? So yes, we may get a higher taste from doing chanting and, you know, participating in Kirtan and uh, doing Seva at the temple. But we should not neglect the duties that we have to our family and especially you know, financial responsibilities, uh, especially as a, you know, male uh, who's responsible for the family. Right? We should be very careful that uh, there's a fine line between, you know, being uh, motivated for material success and then also doing our duties to take care of the needs of the family and also contributing towards the mission. So devotee, as, as aspiring devotees, we are not encouraged to be very materially uh, motivated. Right? And that uh, we should, you know, atyahara, prayasicha, over-endeavor, 
uh, collecting more than we need. These are principles that we must follow, but not becoming irresponsible in the name of you know these uh, principles. Right? So, uh, so this is one thing that each devotee has to balance in their life. Right? That where are we crossing the line, and where we are not crossing the line. And where we are becoming irresponsible in our duties. And it's natural that this tendency is there, right? Uh, uh, there's one devotee who was just sharing, right? That there's one devotee who was, uh, you know, he, ha he goes to, he's a, in, in a government job, right? And most of the time during his work, he tries to do uh, devotional seva. You know, so he is like calling up people. He is trying to distribute books, right? but he is not doing his work properly at the office. Right? So ultimately, what happened was that, you know, the 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 senior of this devotee he knew another devotee, right? So he called up that person and he said, like, look, why don't you explain to him that? You know, his being irresponsible in the office actually is generating so much negativity towards Krishna consciousness. So people in the office are actually not taking this person seriously and they are thinking that, you know, this, you know, devotees or Krishna consciousness means that, okay, you become lax in your work and you don't do your responsibilities properly. So we really have to be careful in this regard, because even I've had this tendency, you know, I remember uh, when I first joined work, I, I was not that motivated. And sometimes I would look for times where I can read the Bhagavad Gita on the, uh, my computer, uh, you know, and, uh, and basically not do my office activities in a responsible way. But then I realized that, you know, my conscience would always You know, hurt me and say that, look, what are you doing? You know, this is your work. You should do your responsibilities properly. And the more I read and the more I, you know, took counsel from devotees, the more I realized that we should be very responsible with our work, with all our, uh, because ultimately for a devotee, an aspiring devotee, even our work, uh, even our financial, you know, our money that we earn, our family, Everything is meant to be offered as, a, uh, as an offering to the Lord. Right? Uh, as Bhakti Vinod Thakur sings, he says that Manasa Deha Geha Jo Kichu Moro Arpilu Tuva Pade Nand Kishora. So he's offering everything at right? his mind, his body, his family. So similarly, our work. Uh, and all our other responsibilities towards our family and other duties, we must do it in the right spirit, in, an, in a responsible way and uh, in a devotional way. Right? And we shouldn't see those as separate from being Krishna conscious. And being responsible also means that we should also have a service connection to Srila Prabhupada's movement. So it doesn't mean only doing our you know, financial responsibilities and our family responsibilities, but also we should try and contribute towards uh, the mission of Krishna consciousness. And Prabhupada has given and set up such a wonderful mission. And he has given this opportunity for all of us to serve in different capacities. So last time we discussed that uh, it's not that we have to stereotype Krishna consciousness in one in some particular way, right? That only this seva is good, only book distribution is good, or only lecturing is good. But actually, whatever capacity, whatever talent a devotee has, we should try and use uh, for uh, the propagation of Srila Prabhupada's mission. Lord Chaitanya's mission. Right? And uh, Prabhupada wanted us right, to be engaged in the mission. So we all should take up some seva. 
it's important for us uh, to take up some service. And there may be times when we may not be able to physically do anything, right? but at least we should contribute uh, you know, financially and uh, try to do whatever little we can. You know, sometimes uh, our health may not allow us to do active service, uh, you know, going to the temple, traveling, or going on book distribution. So maybe we could do some service from the home, right? Uh, we could uh, do some, nowadays there's so much service, like typing service, there's so much uh, web designing, uh, doing presentations, uh, helping in, you know, preparing videos. There's so much uh, seva today that can be done uh, from home. Right? So we should try in whatever way to assist, you know, Srila Prabhupada's mission, especially the local temples that we are associated with. Because how will the mission go on? Right? If as, uh, uh, as members and beneficiaries of, uh, you know, this great mission, right? We've all received this fortune by associating with, uh, with the, the International Society of Krishna Consciousness. So we must uh, do something for uh, this wonderful mission. And yes, there are many challenges. There, there will be uh, many challenges. Uh, and there will always be uh, challenges. You know, we are in the Kali Yuga, And uh, there will always be problems. But there, are, there is always an opportunity to do some service. And we should try to do it in a responsible way. Uh, by uh, not, you know, whatever we take up for the temple or whatever we take up for our spiritual master, right? we should do that in a responsible, consistent way. Just like we would do anything in our, you know, uh, so we should also do our seva in a responsible way. Right? And this is one of the key things that uh, Lord Chaitanya taught by his example. You know, he said that his spiritual master he told him that you go, you go and sing and you dance, right? And uh, you, uh, uh, you chant these holy names. But at the same time, you also distribute this knowledge. So he says, Krishna Upadesi Sarvajan, right? So you give this knowledge to everyone. And similarly, Lord Chaitanya has given the same instruction to all his followers. And he has told them that, you know, jare, jare dekhe tare kaho Krishna Upadesh. So our movement is a uh, preaching mission. Right? And uh, preaching doesn't mean just, you know, talking, but actually living, uh, living the, the truth of Krishna consciousness and then sharing this wonderful message that Krishna is giving to everyone. And this is what also Srila Prabhupada in so many purports, in so many, so many different instructions that Prabhupada has given that, you know, how we should all engage right, in uh, spreading uh, Krishna consciousness. So being responsible means that we should also, uh, we should take care of our family responsibilities. Uh, our responsibilities at work, right, and uh, responsibilities towards the society, and also we should uh, take responsibilities in the preaching mission and try and spread you know, uh, this wonderful message of uh, Lord Chaitanya to everybody according to our capacity. Now, moving on uh, to the next principle is that uh, the principle of prayer and uh, this I have found to be very, very helpful like uh, all the other principles. Uh, this principle is also very helpful in uh, advancing in Krishna consciousness. So our Shastras are full of different prayers right? when we read the Bhagavatam 
Right? There is, uh, just in the first canto, right, the prayers of Queen Kunti, right? uh, the prayers you know, Bhishma Dev offers to Krishna. Uh, there's so many different, and there is, you know, as we go through the cantos, there's so many prayers, you know, Lord Prahlad's prayers, Dhuva Maharaj's prayers. Uh, uh, the, uh, so there's so many sections where devotees are expressing and usually devotees express uh, uh, gratitude, they express appreciation. Then, like in Gajendra's prayers, they also make certain requests sometimes. And uh, there are also uh, uh, prayers uh, glorifying the Lord. Right? Beautiful, beautiful prayers, you know, glorifying so many qualities of the Lord. And uh, so now one may think that, okay, these prayers are said by such great devotees. And uh, what can we tiny souls, you know, pray to uh, Krishna? We have no qualification. So how can we pray? Uh, we may think that, you know, we are not qualified to pray. But... Uh, Prabhupada has uh, encouraged us in many different ways to pray to Krishna. Right? And uh, regardless of our uh, advancement in Krishna consciousness, Prabhupada has said that every devotee you know, should uh, pray to the Lord. Right? And I will just read you a few quotes so this is from Raja Vidya, uh, pages 17 to 18. So Prabhupada says, In addition to giving and receiving in the execution of devotional service, one has to submit to Krishna whatever distress or confidential problem he or she has. One should say, Krishna, I am suffering in this way. I have fallen in this Tossing ocean of material illusion. Kindly pick me up. And then Prabhupada says, this is in Bhagavatam 3.9.24. Prabhupada says that uh, this is in regarding Lord Brahma's prayers for protection. So Brahma as the supermost Brahmana is afraid of such a fall down. And therefore, he prays to the Lord for protection. This is a warning for one and all in the spiritual advancement of life. Unless one is sufficiently protected by the Lord, he may fall down from his spiritual position. Therefore, one has to pray constantly to the Lord for protection and the blessing to carry out one's duty. And there are many, many... Uh, Purports like this, where Srila Prabhupada uh, encourages us to pray to Krishna. Right? Uh, even though we may not be very advanced, right? uh, we should pray to uh, Krishna and our Guru Maharaj to help us advance in Krishna consciousness. And there are many different types of uh, prayers that we can make. There are prayers of gratitude. There are prayers of uh, requests that we make to Krishna to help us advance in Krishna consciousness. Right? We have so many anarthas. So this is prayer establishes a very personal connection with the Lord. Right? We can pray to the deities that we have right, in our house. Uh, and... Uh, uh, make honest submissions and beg for the mercy and the strength to carry out you know, our, our duties in Krishna consciousness. And Prabhupada says that even when we are going through trouble, right, it is not that you know, we do not share that, oh, you know, Krishna, I cannot share with you my, you know, you are, you are the Lord. So you know what is going on in my heart. So uh, uh, 
I don't need to tell you anything. But Sri Prabhupada says that we should reveal our hearts to Krishna and share with Krishna whatever you know, trouble there is, whatever, uh, whatever challenges we are facing and, and pray to Krishna for the strength to go on right, serving. So this is a very uh, essential part of our sadhana and our, uh, and our part of our Krishna consciousness. And we see that all the devotees, they express themselves in different types of prayers to the Lord. And uh, we can get inspiration from them on how to pray. And of course, the main prayer that we say every day, right, are our, uh, you know, uh, chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra. That is our main prayer, right? And that prayer is simply, O oh Krishna, you know, please let us, uh, give us the strength to serve you. Let us love you. you know? So, uh, this is the main prayer that we say. And this prayer should be, uh, as Prabhupada has, you know, there are many different instructions on how we should uh, chant the names of the Lord. And you all are, uh, you know, studying the Harinam Chintamani. So, I'll not uh, get into that. But uh, Prabhupada's main instructions on prayer uh, of the Hare Krishna mantra, he, want, he wanted us to pray in a helpless mood like, a, like, a, like a, a child who's helplessly crying out for one's mother. And uh, his, another one of his main instructions was that we should distinctly hear uh, the, uh, the chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra. So if these two things uh, we can do, uh, uh, these are the main things that Prabhupada has emphasized when it comes to chanting the Hare Krishna mantra. And of course, there are many, many other uh, instructions and there are many, many ways that we can prepare ourselves uh, to focus on the chanting. Uh, and I'm sure you're learning many things uh, by studying the Hari, Harinam Chintamani. So... Uh, Ultimately, we are beggars. So, a prayer is a way of begging for the mercy of the Lord. And the more we can plead to the Lord with uh, sincerity and honesty, the more we will feel uh, strength, we will feel this personal connection and dependence on the Lord. And it will give us a lot of strength to to progress in Krishna consciousness. I remember I, uh, I read, actually I heard, there's, this, there's a wonderful uh, seminar called Vandanam. Right? This is by uh, His Holiness Satsurup Maharaj. Uh, and he gave it in, this is a VIHE seminar he gave in Vindavan. Right? And I think it was given in the early 90s. I, I, I heard it in 1998. So I think it was in the early 90s or mid 90s. You can get it on Iskon Desire Tree. And there's also a beautiful book. It's called Vandanam. The same seminar is in the book. And I would say that much of my life, right, uh, or much of my approach in Krishna consciousness is based on uh, this book, Vandanam. Right? And many times, when I meet Radhisham Prabhu uh, from Pune, right, who's uh, so renowned and so dedicated, uh, you know, for his uh, dedication and his preaching and his contribution to uh, Srila Prabhupada's mission, uh, whenever I meet him, right, he always uh, expresses his gratitude for this uh, book, Vandanam. Right? And uh, he, uh, he also shares that much of his approach to Krishna consciousness uh, uh, has been helped by this book, uh, uh, Bandhanam. So uh, I'm sharing this with you because uh, this has personally helped me a lot. And uh, this book, we are planning to print it at the end of this month uh, because it's not uh, widely available in India. But I'm just finishing the proofreading. Seva for this, 
and hopefully by the end of this month we should uh, print this book now moving on to the next uh, principle the eighth principle is a principle of uh, what i have termed as the inconceivable principle a chinta principle now what does that mean uh, that means that this is a principle that we learn from shastra that achinta is one of the qualities of krishna right achinta guna swarupam so there are many many verses uh, that describe krishna as achinta right and this is uh, an essential part of our philosophy to understand that we cannot understand the lord right with our uh, tiny uh, material brains right it's not possible in fact if we are to accept krishna we must accept this uh, that krishna is ultimately inconceivable to uh, material senses uh, material intelligence uh, so prabhupad says the activities of the lord are always inconceivable to the tiny brain of the living entity nothing is impossible for the supreme lord but all his actions are wonderful for us and thus he is beyond the range of our inconceivable limits then in one lecture prabhupad says he says this is bhagavad gita uh, 1973 september 29 verse 6 uh, of the 13th chapter so prabhupad says therefore jiva goswami says unless you accept inconceivable power of the supreme lord you cannot understand god that is not possible okay. and then he says that uh, he says that if we think that we can understand god with our tiny brains he says that's dr frogs's calculation of the atlantic ocean so he says that a frog lives within the well and he's calculating the length and breadth of the atlantic ocean how is it possible it is not possible so we are the frogs in the well we have got limited capacity to understand our senses are limited we are thinking of krishna or god right? and he is unlimited now what does this mean practically practically it means that there are many things that we may not understand and everything may not make sense immediately to us in krishna consciousness and what we can understand is that that is fine right it's not that we need to understand everything you know and then we all can make progress in krishna consciousness no prabhupad says that in fact unless we accept this principle it will be very difficult to make progress in krishna consciousness just like there's so many things that happen right we cannot make sense of sometimes sometimes we see very advanced devotees they have setbacks so how do we understand that sometimes it's logically not possible to understand it sometimes things happen in our life right that don't make sense i remember so many times you know like i would think okay we are doing this we are doing everything right we are you know but nothing is working you know why and if you get stuck on that why and think that okay unless i know why i'll not you know uh, enthusiastically carry out my krishna consciousness it will be practically impossible to uh, advance in krishna consciousness we have to accept that with our tiny brains and our conditioning we cannot understand everything right and 
this is beautifully explained in the Srimad Bhagavatam in the first canto by Bhishma Dev. You know, Maharaj Yudhishthir is so troubled, right? Uh, even after the war, right? He cannot, he's so aggrieved by the fact that just for them to gain the kingdom, they had to kill so many hundreds and thousands of you know, people died. And he just couldn't, he couldn't understand that. So, then Krishna encourages him that, you know, you please approach Bhishma Dev and he will guide you. He is about to leave his body. Let us all go there. And this is such an emotional, you know, scene in the Bhagavatam that uh, Bhishma Dev is lying on this bed of arrows and he's seeing, you know, the Pandavas, Krishna's on this, on his side, the Pandavas are there, the Queen Quinti is there and he's looking at them in affection and he, you know, there are tears coming out of his eyes, right? And even he, he cannot believe that, that such, uh, uh, such religious and such dharmic and such righteous uh, people like the Pandavas right? and Mother Kunti, they had to go through so much struggle. And the only thing that he said in response, he said that actually this is, it's very difficult to understand the plan of the Lord. And he says that this is due to uh, the inevitable kala, the time factor, which is again, he says, this is the energy of the Lord, right? So ultimately what is, what he is saying is that ultimately this was the plan of the Lord and it is not easily understood. And he says that, O King, this is verse 16, right? Of the ninth chapter in the first canto. He said, no one can know the plan of the Lord, Sri Krishna. Even though great philosophers inquire exhaustively, they are bewildered. And Prabhupada writes, he says that Bhishma wanted to impress upon Maharaj Yudhishthir that since time immemorial, no one, including such demigods, as Shiva and Brahma could ascertain the real plan of the Lord. So what can we understand about it? It is useless also to inquire about it. Even the exhaustive philosoph philosophical inquiries of sages cannot ascertain the plan of the Lord. The best policy is to simply abide by the orders of the Lord without argument. So now, uh, this does not mean that, uh, you know, we become blind followers, that we stop asking questions. Uh, that is certainly not uh, what is being recommended. But there will be things that will happen which will uh, not make sense to us uh, immediately. And all we can do is, if we want to advance in Krishna consciousness, we have to surrender to this principle. We have to learn how to surrender to this achinta principle. Right? And have patience that uh, Krishna willing, you know, that uh, in due course of time, you know, Krishna will reveal or may not reveal depending on Krishna's desire. So this is a very, uh, this has been a very helpful principle for me, uh, you know, to, uh, to kind of survive through many, many different things that I have uh, personally encountered and also seen what other devotees encounter. So many uh, inconceivable things happen in the lives of not only devotees, but also uh, just in the world, 
things happen you know uh, all around us and sometimes we are not able to uh, make sense of that right now coming to the last principle and that is that uh, we all are under the time factor as long as we are in the material world we are all under the time factor of the lord and um, we should try and utilize as devotees or as aspiring practitioners as aspiring devotees we should try and utilize our time uh, in the most meaningful way because whatever time we have and whatever time we waste we cannot get it back right prabhupada often says that uh, he emphasizes this principle that no matter how much money we may have but once you know a moment gone we can't get it back so as devotees uh, as practitioners we must be conscious that we have limited time and we must use our time consciously right and not that you know jaise hi chal raha hai chalne do you know jaise hi hoga you know ho jayega right but we should try and plan our days uh, try to use our time effectively to prioritize our you know sadhana uh, and ensure that we are not wasting time and uh, and again when we look at the nectar of uh, instruction towards the end uh, it said that the essence of all advice is that one must hear chant remember right and serve at krishna 24 hours a day and there are many times where prabhupad you know he he he, he says in his lectures he said this is the goal of krishna consciousness 24 hours we want to be krishna conscious right there's no sleeping no eating <laughs> you know just uh, and there's a question of you know mating or defending so he says you know 24 hours krishna consciousness so of course that's a very uh, um, uh, elevated uh, stage and we can, we should not uh, you know there is no way we should try to imitate that but the essence of the principle is that we should try and use our time in the most meaningful way possible right and uh, and because who knows right how much time we actually have so we should be conscious of our time and uh, you know there are many uh, periods in the day where where we do tasks that are seemingly very mundane right so sometimes like like say for uh, if you are in the house we if you spend most of our time in the house we may be doing household duties and i remember in the us when i was staying there we had to do everything ourselves right so cleaning the house so after work come and clean the house uh, clean the kitchen cook you know do so many things now if these things like cleaning we can try and listen to lecture or when we are tired we can listen to kirtan right when we are walking when we are in the bus uh, to fit in you know krishna conscious activities even when we are doing things uh, which require our effort and energy but uh, maybe not so much intelligence then we can listen to uh, you know plug in and listen to you know krishna conscious lectures and listen to uh, Uh, kirtan when we are tired or speak to a devotee you know seek out some association uh, so we should try and use our time uh, in the best way possible and uh, uh, prabhupad says that philosophy means to ke- keep death in the forefront that doesn't mean you know we get all worked up and you know uh, but we should be conscious that every day is a gift 
from Krishna. To remember him in gratitude, to remember uh, our Guru Maharaj, to remember all the devotees, and to try and carry out our lives uh, in the most you know, uh, Krishna conscious way possible by using our time effectively. So these are, you know, some of the uh, principles that I have learned. And I'm sure that many of you will have more things that uh, you would uh, want to share uh, uh, through your own personal experiences. So I will stop here now. Uh, we have a few minutes. So if you have any questions or uh, realizations you would like to share, uh, so kindly do that. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you so very much, uh, <laughs> Very practical tips you have shared with us. Also, they are like organizations. And, um, so, without me saying anything more, uh, Hare Krishna devotees. So, do we do we have any question or comment? Jo Prabhu Ji ne sare principles bataye hain. Do we have any comment? Last one, I will tell you, Prabhu Ji, only one thing devotee don't have, and that is time. You know, so we should use it very, very judiciously. Everything devotees have, one thing they don't have is the time. Yes. Thank you. I have one question to ask to, uh, to uh, Nitin Prabhu. What is... Yes. He says that we should surrender to Krishna. Uh, yes. But what I'm telling you is it is easier said than done. If, you know, all things are going wrong with the life. It is not yes. easy to surrender. I mean, how do I get this uh, get this uh, you know expertise or uh, the habit starts to surrendering? So Prabhuji, we uh, the best way or most effective way I felt that to help me personally right, is that we take we take uh, the shelter of the scriptures, right? Because the scriptures, what do they discuss? You know, say you know when we study the Bhagavatam, for example, the Bhagavatam discusses the lives of devotees who went through so much struggle. Our struggle is nothing compared to say what the Pandavas went through, right? Our struggle is nothing compared to what Prahlad Maharaj went through. Our struggle is nothing compared to what Haridas Thakur went through, right? So, in fact, our scriptures are full of struggles of these devotees. Our struggles are nowhere. Like if we study the life of Srila Prabhupada, right? Uh, if we study the uh, uh, the Prabhupada Leela Amrita, right? So many challenges Prabhupada went through. You know? And I'm telling you that personally, whenever I have been down in my life, right? and I went through personal, like many challenges, you know, for the last, like for 18 years, I went through many different challenges. And there would be times where I would be like, you know, totally overwhelmed and think like, I can't, or, or name I karpanga. No? And then I would open up Prabhupada Leela Amrit, right? start studying Prabhupada's life. And then I would think like, okay, you know, Prabhupada's troubles, you know, were far greater than what we are going through. Uh, then you pick up the, you know, uh, Bhagavatam, you, you learn about Maharaj Pariksit, great king, right? Suddenly told, okay, you have seven days to live. Right? This is easier said than done. We may think, Are, you know, it's so easy for one to give up. But the way Parikshit Maharaj graciously accepts and surrenders, I mean, this whole Bhagavatam is about that only. You know, how we graciously surrender even though things don't go our way. So when we hear, we get so much inspiration. And, you know, if you study, we may, you know, sometimes you may think, okay, you know, this Bhagavatam, this is about stories that were, you know, thousands of, you know, years ago. Tell us something more practical, you know. So then we read Prabhupada's biography. Prabhupada's biography is just, you know, in the last 
No. Sorry, there is some problem in the years. network. So, sorry, we cannot hear you. There is One, some problem in the network, it seems. But but we can we can understand uh, partially. We can hear partially. There is some network issue. So can you hear now? We can hear. Yes, no, I can. No, hear. we can hear. Maybe okay. something wrong at his end. Some we problem. Some problem on my side, it seems. Okay. Yeah, go ahead, sir. So I hope you know if we and there are many devotees living today who themselves have gone through so much, you know, hardship. So when we when we you know when we associate with them, we hear about them and you know how much there's so many faith inspiring examples. So we can uh, uh, by associating with them, by reading the Bhagavatam, by reading Prabhupada's. You know, we will get a lot of inspiration to move forward in our surrender. Because their lives were about surrender. The Bhagavatam is about surrender. Prabhupada's life was about surrender. And that will help us in surrendering ourselves. By hearing and taking association of devotees. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Do good. When Thank can you. I, when can we expect Bye your book, sir? When can we expect your book? By end of the month? That's not my, my book. It's written by Satsuk Maharaj. Okay. It's a very old book. It's written in the you know, mid 90s. Okay. But it has been out of print. So we're just printing them now. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so you, much. Thank you, Ritai Prabhu. So there are more some things on the on the chat. Neha Mataji is saying thank you so much, Prabhuji, for insightful principles. Rashna Mataji is writing, Hare Krishna Prabhuji, Dharma Pranam. We are very fortunate to be part of this class. We learn how to progress in this journey towards bhakti, and these principles inspire us to make more efforts. And Neha Mataji is saying thank you, Prabhuji, for your wonderful sessions. These principles are so practical, and surely I will feel. I feel even I can follow. If I can follow one of these, it would help me grow in my spiritual life. Yes, thank you, Neha Mataji. Or, uh, Prabhu is saying, Hare Krishna, Prabhuji, Dhanatanam, all the sessions were very, very practical. Yes, thank you. So, Hare Krishna. So, does anybody has any, any other question or comment? Please come forward. Because it, it goes some ways off. Uh, it will take some one Prabhuji for everybody to take. Uh, so That's okay. Suril Prabhu is saying thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Uh, okay. So. Uh, yes, Prabhuji. Yes. Can I ask a question? Sure, Prabhu. Yes. Prabhuji, you mentioned about uh, setbacks. So, I mean, Prabhuji, the how to handle them in real or practical life means, uh, I mean, for Acharyas and for means great devotees, I mean, but for us, how to, because for example, we pray a lot for something and we are sharing with Krishna also, but but so nothing is uh, how to do Prabhuji, uh, what I would may suggest Karunga ke ye jo nine principles hamne discuss kiye hain uh, agar hem, in par thoda sa hum vichar karenge and when we apply these things uh, we will get strength to uh, to go on with uh, you know despite all these setbacks so one thing is that this is the nature of the material world right? that there will be setbacks right? this corona virus has uh, uh, given a setback to almost everyone right? except for a few few uh, minor minority you know uh, portion of the population uh, 
most people you know it is a big setback you know financially so many things you know uh, sometimes you know businesses are going down uh, not able to execute so many of uh, so this is the nature of the material world and the more we will study shastra the more we will take shelter of uh, these wonderful examples given in the shastra and the more we will associate with devotees we will get strength now how this strength comes you know how exactly it will come we don't know right but we have faith the krishna does reciprocate right the krishna is there and krishna will reciprocate if we sincerely keep trying and i and i can tell you one thing from my own experience that if we desire the right things krishna always recipro reciprocates sometimes we may have to wait but there is no reason why krishna will not reciprocate if we desire the right things and we try and develop the right attitude krishna gives us strength right and we can all personally experience this but as prabhu pad said that that will come when we are dedicated to follow the instructions so despite difficulties when we try and carry out the instructions of krishna praying for strength then uh, miracles happen and uh, this is the testimony of so many of the devotees in the bhagavatam right and this is the testimony of many devotees you know struggling devotees uh, in this world as well you know uh, and i can say whatever little tiny struggles i have been through krishna you know really helps if you keep trying to do the right things right if you want to compromise if you want to take shortcuts then yeah it becomes difficult to get krishna's help right but if you try and carry out krishna's instructions uh, and to whatever capacity krishna this is krishna's uh, guarantee that he will protect us so i i don't think i i can say more than what krishna himself says right so we should take shelter of the instructions of krishna and guru and try and carry them out and that that in itself will give us strength to overcome uh, all these uh, problems and sometimes we may not be able to overcome but we may uh, be able to we may, we will get strength to deal with them in a uh, in an enthusiastic and uh, uh, patient way so i hope that helps you prabhu yes prabhu thank you very much it's very hope yes. giving hari krishna prabhu ji this is the last uh, question from mega mata ji hari krishna prabhu ji thank you for your wonderful session i have a question as a new fi devotee could we emphasize more on doing seva or our sadhana how to keep the balance please suggest this is a very good question <laughs> so i i personally uh, i personally think a balance is very helpful for the devotees right and in my own personal life right uh, what has helped me is a balance like uh, Uh, between sadhana and seva so right from my uh, uh, you know first few days in in the temple right i got uh, connected with some seva in the temple and uh, i also personally feel that good sadhana without good sadhana uh, also there is no krishna consciousness so we have to balance both and uh, i think that sometimes especially in our initial years uh, uh, 
we should seek out association and service, right? Uh, which will help us keep enthused. Sometimes when we isolate ourselves and take on maybe, you know, I'll chant extra rounds in isolation. Uh, I personally never did that. Now I'm sharing you with my personal experience. Like, you know, I know some devotees, they, you know, they chant 64 rounds, they, you know, uh, but for me, like, I've always had a balance of service and of course, you know, doing sadhana and uh, uh, reading and chanting uh, and prioritizing that, but also having a good balance of seva. Uh, so uh, I would say that I always, you know, I personally encourage devotees uh, that we should balance our spiritual life with uh, sadhana and seva. And uh, and there are times, you know, in our life that as we grow older, uh, then we can make more time for, you know, chanting more rounds and. You know, but uh, especially our initial years, I feel we should uh, have a good balance of sadhana and seva both. Yes. Thank you, Nitai Prabhu. Yes, it's a very practical question. Or, uh, you have told us that yes, in the initial years, we must seek association and seva both. You know. And Prabhupada, I remember Prabhuji once, Prabhupada said, I think he was speaking with Tamal Krishmaraj, and he said that, uh, yes, when we retire, he was in Mayapur and he was speaking how, uh, you know, devotees after doing all the seva, they can retire in uh, Mayapur and then just focus on their chanting. And um, and while speaking, then Tropa said, "But I will, I, I will never retire. I will always, you know, preach, you know." And uh, devotees are so filled with that mood. Yes, yes, Prabhu, Jai Prabhupada, Jai Prabhupada will not retire. But um, yes, each one of us has to seek our own balance, you know. Yes. What, what is yeah. balance for one may may not may be imbalance for another. So we have to seek, uh, you know, uh, a help of our seniors and they under their guidance. We know what is balance, and our understanding of balance may not be what we think is balance. You know. Yes. Yes. Thank you so much. Yeah, that's very so, important to take guidance from uh, devotees, senior uh, mentors. As Prabhu, as Prabhuji just said, that uh, this is the essence of spiritual life. You know, to take guidance from uh, our mentors. So Mega Mata is saying thank you so much, Prabhuji. And Shivani Mata is saying thank you so much. And Sanjay Prabhu, who asked you the question, the first one, he's also saying very profound. Thank you, Prabhuji. So I think it's already 8.45. So thank you so very much, Nitai Prabhu. I mean, thank you. Of course, time Nikala, we just talking. I was just discussing with Nitai Prabhu. Yes. So uh, I, I was saying, I was just discussing with you when we were starting Bhagavad Gita classes, what to do, what not to do. And then somehow Prabhuji uh, had this idea to have these nine principles. So uh, this manifested. So today was a concluding day. So thank you so very much, Ndai Prabhu. I'm very grateful yes. to you. Thank uh, you, Prabhuji. Yes. It's my very great pleasure. honor and pleasure to be with all of you. And uh, Thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you, Prabhuji. Yes. Thank you, Prabhuji. 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 Thank Prabhuji. Thank you, 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 Hari Bol, Hare Krishna. Thank you. So thank you so very much, devotees. I hope uh, it was meaningful for all of us. ये जो जो भी प्रभुजी ने हमें nine principles बताए सारे के सारे, they're very practical for us. और अगर थोड़ा सा इनके बारे में सोचेंगे और इनपे contemplate करेंगे, then they will be very very helpful to us. So thank you so very much. So we'll meet tomorrow evening now. Uh, for our Prabhupada Lila Amrit class. So, and we may have some good surprise for you for this Saturday. 
So uh, please hold on. I'll confirm tomorrow. It is not confirmed, but Krishna willing, we will have some good surprise for you for Saturday. So thank you so very much. Hare Krishna. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you so much, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Thank you so much.